Just one more marker down in fourth, 29 behind Davey Millsaps. Here's how you get to tonight's main event, the road to the main. Here at Orlando, we'll stack up like this, two heat races. We will run six laps with 20 riders, top nine advancing straight to the main. Everybody else to the last chance qualifier. It's four laps, 22 riders in the top four transfer onto the main. The main event tonight, 22 riders in the gate, 15 laps to the checkered flag. Now, before we get started with the first heat of the night, here's Chris Tavoto with a Progressive Direct pre-race report. One of the guys we haven't talked about much this year is number 93, Teddy Meyer on a Kawasaki. You see him right behind me. Now, he's not one of the guys, one of the big four in the points battle, but he is racing for something special this weekend. March Madness, of course, Teddy Meyer from Fort Dodge, Iowa. That's very near the University of Northern Iowa, my alma mater. The Panthers knocked out in the first round, so was the University of Iowa. So Teddy is representing the Hawkeye State, trying to bring back the winning feeling. Well, my California State University Chico Wildcats not even in there this year. Here's our Dunlop starting list, or any year for that matter. Some big names in this one, including Chris Gossler, who's been right in the thick of this points chase all season, Denny. Goose just keeps better each weekend. He's podium now uh, three times. Almost a perfect podium if he hadn't crashed in Atlanta. And, you know, hats off the pro circuit. Mitch Payton, those guys are taking a chance on Little Goose, and uh, he's delivering so far this season. There is Chris Gossler on the 102. He's been through a lot of injuries in his career, and uh, the kid just keeps fighting back. He's got a huge heart, and uh, it's nice to see him back on the program, riding so well. He's third, currently second in points, just uh, five points ahead of that Josh Grant. Looking at what we're seeing right now, Josh Grant's been the faster of the two, I think. Uh, if it wasn't for that, that big crash in the opening round in St. Louis for Josh, I think Josh and Millsaps will actually be, be battling for the points lead. There's our helmet cam, Martin Davalos carrying it for us here tonight on his Yamaha, the Star Racing Lucas Oil Machine. 30-second board is up. If you're new to Supercross Lights competition, she'll turn that board sideways and we'll be ready to go. The gate will drop and we'll be underway, headed into turn one with heat number one. Remember, the top nine transferring straight out of this heat into tonight's main event. And Denny, the racetrack here, very sandy. What's that gonna do? Sandy, it's slippery. A lot of guys are searching for traction on this course. And this is a very long start straight, straight away as you're gonna see. I expect these guys come charging this first turn and be trying to look for some traction, get those bikes woed. It's about 80 yards to turn one. Here we go. Josh Grant on the 24. And Jay Marmont in that Red Bull KTM. Josh Grant throws an elbow into, jo uh, into Jay, and all of a sudden, Jay drops back to third. Gossler moves that move into second, and out front, Josh Grant. Here's a very, very long move section, the longest we've seen all year. You can see there's a little breaker in between these two sections. So you get a little first section's a little bit smaller than the second set. There's a little breaker gets these guys woed, and then they get a lot of momentum coming that second set. A little bit of a rhythm section here headed to a big triple. See Martin Davos at number 577, Blue Yamaha, takes over that third spot and now sets his sights on Chris Gossler. On board, Davos. One lap in the books. You see oh, that? He almost tucked the front in there, didn't you he? See how slippery the sand is. It piles up some sections. The front end about knifed on Martin right there. He almost went down. Martin's been struggling these last couple weeks. He had a problem uh, in Indianapolis with the Benna Shifter. And then last week in Daytona, he did a big crash in a, in a similar section where James Stewart went down in the Supercross class. Martin trying to find that rhythm that he found early in this light series. So if the sand is that slippery, what do you do as a rider to, to combat it? Well, it's different. It's just sand and outdoors. You spend a lot of time at the back of the motorcycle, letting the front end kind of wander around. You search out big berms in the sand. Here at Supercross, the sand, the, the berms don't really build up that much, and it's more of a flat surface. So these guys are trying to find traction, searching. Some of the guys who are running sand tires in practice realize the sand tires aren't working. They're running hard pack tires out here. Martin Davalos continues the lap here in Orlando. We'll be back for more Supercross lights on speed. Here at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Josh Grant on the number 24 Honda, blitzing through the whoops. Really no problems for Grant. A good almost three second lead over Chris Gosler and his Kawasaki who holds down second place. 
you'll see the names scrolling across the top of your screen. Those in green are the nine riders that hold transfer spots right now straight to the main event. Everybody in red looking to improve and maybe get a straight transfer if they can. Josh is laying down some fast lap times right now. He just threw down a 55.9. Uh, fast lap times at 55.8, about almost two seconds faster than what they were doing in their heat race. But a huge reason because of that, the track has been groomed. This is in, the track's in perfect condition right now, Ralph. Compared to what we're going to see later in the night, this track's definitely going to break down. It's sand-based. It's basically like if you went out to the beach, you start building sand castles with water. It stays very packed for a little while. After a while, that sand starts to dry out and it starts breaking down a little bit. I think we're going to see as the night progresses, this track's starting to break down a little bit and this lap time starting to slow down. Know a lot about building sand castles, Denny? Uh, I do have a shovel and a bucket with me right now. I talked to Chris Gossler earlier today, and uh, you know, I asked him what's been the biggest surprise. It's been kind of an unusual year for Chris. He got this ride pretty late and getting right into the mix of things. So what's been the biggest surprise? He said, the fact I haven't won yet. And you got to like that attitude and that approach to his racing. He's that dedicated and that sure of the fact that he should be here and belongs here. Well, he definitely uh, has shown some great things this season. We see him right now keeping pace with Josh Grant. Josh already has a win under his belt this season. So it's just a matter of getting that first win under your belt, as Chris Gosser has yet to do in his career. Once you get that first win, the rest just seem to fall with a lot more ease. And one thing Gosser's racing right now for this season, he doesn't even know if he has a ride currently for the outdoor season. His contract right now with Pro Circuit is for Supercross only. So right now he's racing for a ride to get through the rest of the summer. Yeah, and he, he told me too, Denny, that if nothing else, he hopes that maybe with his performance here this year, that at least if there's no budget to get him into the outdoors this year, maybe at least get him invited back for a full season next year. Yep, and that's all you can do each weekend is make it happen. And Josh Rant takes the win here in heat race number one. So Grant takes the win. Gossler crosses right behind him in second. Top nine will go straight to the main. Novelos will bring our helmet cam there. Chisholm's going, Woods is going, and the rest into the top nine. Here's your final transfer. And that will be the 156 of Browning. He's going on to the main event. He'll skip right past the last chance qualifier. And William Browning has to go get his bike ready. But Josh Grant, he's got to go to the top step of the podium. That's next for him. Here's a look at our whole shot replay. Coming right down the pipe, you see all these guys coming down the middle there. You see J Jay Marmon on that number 111 Red Bull KTM. He's gonna go wide, go all the way to the berm. Where well, you're gonna see some of the guys in the Kawasaki drop in out of your screen to the inside line. But Jay Marmont used that momentum, slingshots off the berm and grabs the whole shot. And at the checkered flag, it was Josh Grant styling over the Ant Mobile finish line jump. As he gets set for a trip to the main event. And here are the nine riders going straight on to tonight's main event. And the first one missing the cut is Dusty Klatt on the 344. But Josh Grant is standing by with Krista Voda. Our Heat 1 winner in the lights class, Josh Grant. And Josh, I know you're kind of an outdoors guy. We've been talking a lot about how sandy this track is. So give us your feedback. Is it like an outdoor track out there? Uh, you know, it is actually. I mean, it's really sandy and it's got a lot of ruts and lines and stuff. But uh, uh, it was kind of slick. I mean, there was there was actually no lines because they just got done grading it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to you know, pull from these guys, but uh, we'll see about the main event, it'll be good. Hard to pull from him, but that's what he did. Josh Grant takes a huge upper hand into our main event. The next set of riders are in the gate here at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, as heat number two for the Supercross Lights East Coast Series is getting set and ready to go. Here's our Dunlop start list for this one. Stefan Ricotta is in here, and Denny, he's been picking up the speed, but he's got a long way to go to catch the 118 to Davey Millsaps. Yeah, it's great to see Stefan back. He's making little baby steps each and every week, getting that confidence back. He's been a front runner in the past, and I think he just needs a little bit of that confidence to get back on top. Time for another progressive direct pre-race report. Here's Krista. In this heat, keep your eyes on the blue Yamahas of Brandon Jessamine and Matt Walker, teammates. Matt Walker finished fourth here last year. And these two teammates use the track a little differently than some of the guys, at least that's what they did in practice. Down here in this turn, you see this berm that's kind of been formed because we talked about how sandy the track is. This is kind of a bike-made berm that's right here. A lot of the riders are using this. Brandon and Matt are going to move over here. They've been using this high outside berm to kick off, gain some speed to go down to that whoops and rhythm section. Keep your eye on the blue Yamahas. Wide variety of lines here, Denny. That's the one thing we're going to get as those ruts develop all night long. And Davey Millsaps 
He's going to have to find a good line through him. Well, it comes down when you tr a track like this, not only the fast guy, but the smartest guy, because the track is going to break down. That's why I like coming to Orlando. It, it, it's going to break down. It's going to be the guy who changes up his lines, changes different things, and uh, Davey Mills has to get it done. He's fast and grand adjustment as well. He's proven to get it done outdoors, and I think this has got a little outdoor feel to this track. Grand adjustment can hopefully uh, use some of that knowledge he's got from the Nationals in the past and use it here tonight. Well, and they should feel kind of in an outdoor mode after racing in Daytona just a week ago. That's one Supercross track that's as close to an outdoor as you're gonna get. Yeah, two two of the most uh, outdoor flavors are here in Florida, and uh, it's nice to see a little change up. I think that's the greatest thing about Supercross. You get a variety each and every week. Again, about 80 yards from the gate, to turn one, a lot of room for these riders to pick up a whole bunch of speed before they have to grab the brake. Now watch these guys come flying into this outside line. Check out some of the guys dropping the inside, hoping to get cut this first turn a little shorter. It's worked in the past. Not for some of them. Millsap's actually got a pretty good start, Denny. He's back in second place. Yeah, I think that's Brian Johnson, Martin Davos, a star racing Lucas Oil's Yamaha teammate out front, and Millsaps. Man, that kid's been working on starts in the past. He's been buried in the back of the back. The last couple weeks, he's been up front. It is Johnson, and joining them in the middle of all that is Robert Canary on the 54, who's also been a player so far this year. And look it, it's going to be Millsaps and Canary, but Millsaps just blazing through the woods. Well, we've seen week in and week out. David Millsaps is definitely the king of the whoop section in the lights class, and both Millsaps and Johnson went wide to set up for the whoops. Canary decided to go to the inside line, made the move from third to first, and then Millsaps used all that momentum and just blitzed all the way to the front of the pack. Even though Davey Millsaps lives in Georgia, a lot of friends and family coming to the race here in Orlando. Big week for him here, and he's definitely looking to put on a show in front of his fans. Again, as the names scroll across the top of your screen, remember those in green, will be the ones that hold the top nine positions, which are the straight transfers to the main event. Everybody in red looking at the last chance qualifier. Millsap's already opening up just about a full second lead for Canary. Canary, you see him on that 54 red Honda, Ralph. This season, he's got a season high fifth. He's currently fifth in the points as well. Well, Brian Johnson, on the other hand, he hasn't quite had the same success. He had a season high eighth last weekend in Daytona. Looking to improve it here in Orlando. And just outside your screen on that green Kawasaki is Donnie McGordy. He's a local Florida rider. Looking to improve here in front of the hometown crowd. McGordy out of Tampa. He's a team green rider for Kawasaki. He's in their program. And we'll be right back to our program. Supercross lights from Orlando after these words here on speed continues to lead here in the citrus bowl in orlando as heat number two works its way through the six laps just at the halfway point the three laps ago he just laid down a 56.1 that's his fast lap time so far this heat race still a little bit off of what we saw from josh grant josh threw down a 55.8 was his fastest and even today in practice Millsaps is almost a little over a half second off of what grant's pace is so I think these two Honda riders setting up a true battle for that 15 lap main event. Well, and he keeps extending his lead over this rider here. Johnson, who holds down second place. It's an out of uh, almost six and a half seconds. As Johnson has gotten around Canary, who held that position for quite a while. Johnson looking very comfortable. I know he broke his arm racing the West Light Series and the first opening round of Anaheim. He was able to switch coasts. And nothing worse than having to come back from injury in such a competitive class like the lights. But it looks like Brian Johnson's finding speed, getting some confidence back, and getting some of that conditioning back that he no doubt lost after being injured. Why that long whoop section is going to test your upper body tonight, isn't it? And what looks good about the whoop section is they're, they weren't too big. The, the, the fact that they're not getting really grooved. You see those guys coming into your living room. They're, got, they're on the left side of the screen. They're on the right side of the screen. They're running right down the middle. It's nice to see when the whoops, when you can ride in any, any line. It doesn't become one line, and that way there's going to be a lot of passing in that section. White flag is out. One more to go for Davey Millsaps. Looks pretty effortless, Denny. Davey's a strong rider. In the past, I think his, his, his train regime's been questioned when he rode for Suzuki. 
But now that he's on Honda, he has the technique, and I think he's found out, found his fitness, and found kind of coming to his own for getting stronger. I mean, he just turned 18 years old. He's a young kid, he's a big kid, and uh, I think he is the future of our sport. He's the future for Honda as well, I think, right now, and we'll soon be seeing him on the 450, and I'm excited to see him on the bigger bike. You are. I'm not so sure the guys in the 450 Supercross class are. Yeah, He's definitely. He's going to be a strong competitor as soon as he arrives on the scene. Checkered flag here for the Supercross lights. Heat number two. Davey Millsaps takes the win. And it's a long look back over the shoulder for Davey before he finds the man who comes in second, Johnson. This is the rider who holds the final transfer spot. Gerke on the 53, Matt Gerke out of Florida. He's going to get that final ninth transfer spot on his Yamaha, and he's going straight to the pits with the main event transfer ticket. There's Millsaps talking things over with Johnson as they get set now to think about what's coming up. Here's what happened, though, when they dropped the game. Coming right down to center your screen as well, these guys, Brian Johnson. On that Yamaha, Lucas Oil starts and Yamaha. These guys are getting out front early. All flies off the track, but out front, Davalos, or not Davalos, I'm sorry, Brian Johnson out front. Look at Canary. Canary goes all the way to the inside, puts the block, but Millsaps, he has the momentum and the speed to the whoops, carries it through and goes from third to first. And to the checkered flag. Here's a look at the nine that will go on to the main event. And the one rider that doesn't make it, Michael Blows on the number 79 out of Phoenix, Arizona. Got 10, one spot short. He's going on to the last chance qualifier. Let's head downstairs to Krista. Well, Davey Millsaps made that look very easy. So Davey, I gotta ask you, is there any part of this track that worries you for the main event? On the whole track. The whole track, really? Uh, yeah, you know, you, uh, everyone's riding really good tonight. And you know, I got out to a good start that time again. And you know, I just try to get out front as fast as I could just to learn the track and stuff. And, you know, came out, to, came out to my advantage. Advantage indeed. Learning the track, we'll see Davey Millsaps in the main event. Tuesday night on speed, build or bust. Can a novice bike builder create a custom chopper like the pros? Here's their chance to prove it. Watch as these rookie wrenches pour their blood, sweat, and tears into building the bike of their dreams. So what's the catch? They only get 30 days. Build or bust, Tuesday night, 10 Eastern, only on speed. We're coming back here to Orlando on the home of the Supercross Light Series, Speed Channel, right after this. Wednesday night on Speed, is this 16-year-old playing smart? The MotoGP World Championship Spanish Grand Prix. Tune in to catch all the two-wheeled action from one of the most coveted circuits on the schedule. The MotoGP 250 and MotoGP World Championship Spanish Grand Prix, tomorrow, 2 Eastern, on Speed. Last Chance Qualifier is up next for the Supercross Lights East Coast competitors. Final shot to make it into tonight's 15 rider, 22 lap, or 22 rider, 15 lap main event. 22 laps, it'd be a long main event. Would be, would be. A lot of good riders in this Last Chance Qualifier. Some guys we really don't expect to see. One of those guys is that Sobe Samsung rider, Sobe Samsung rider, Thomas Hahn. Currently sixth in points, and he is here in this last chance qualifier. He has four laps to get a good start and put in that main event. First, we're going to see number 79, Michael Blos from Arizona, riding the East Coast Lights Championship Series. He raced some of the Arena Cross Series, sponsored by Storm Lake Honda, GPS Racing. He is currently 11th in points, and uh, he's had a good season this year. A lot of, a lot of sponsors taking note of him, and uh, I expect big things from him in the future. So in this one is the 42 machine of Decatur, Texas is Thomas Hahn. I was just down in Texas this past weekend at the GNC Amateur Nationals. I saw Thomas's brother, Will Hahn, down there doing battle. Two very talented brothers. His brother, Will, will soon be turning pro here. We'll see him at this, uh, at this level as well. Four laps, 22 riders, top four advancing onto the main to fill out that 22 rider. Main event gate. There goes the 32nd board. Let me state the obvious. If there's ever a race to get a good start in, it's this. A four-lap race. They're taking only four to the final. 
little room for error in the last chance qualifier. Down to their way through. Here comes a 42 machine of Thomas Hahn. Battling his way up, looking for the transfer spot. Platt on the 344 has the early lead. The Canadian rider out front, putting this thing in this main event if he can. Sobe Samsung rider Thomas Hahn getting by, moving into second place. We'll try and put in a consistent four laps right now and put in that main event. You know, Han is capable of running podium speed. He just hasn't quite got the start he needs. He's had to come through the pack in pretty much every main event so far this season. And right now, when he lines up for this main event, he's not going to have the best of picks. But when you have a long start straight like you have here in Orlando, being inside or outside isn't quite as important because you have such a long run in that first turn. So hopefully Han can turn things around from main event time and get himself a top 10 start. Really kind of helps balance it back out, doesn't it? As we watch the 79 and Michael Blows, Trying to close in there. He's got the fourth spot on the running order right now. Just to your left your screen at number 811 Yamaha, that's Josh Lichtel. Someone we've, I've seen a lot of growing up. Very talented amateur racer. Hasn't quite found that speed in the pro level right now. But one way to get it done is it's through experience and put in the main event. Right now, he's up in qualifying spot. Remember the riders in green hold the transfer spots. As an aim school across the top of your screen. And with just four riders going on, Jonan right now uh, sits a spot out of it. And things are shifting quickly. Michael Blows right there in third, Josh Litho in fourth. Blows, one of those guys using the arena cross series to tune up to this East Coast lights. Got a great spot with Storm Lake Honda, feeding those Hondas, getting them ready for the Supercross series. And thus, you know, the AMA wanting to use that Arena Cross series, the Honda's use it as a stepping stone into Supercross. And Danny, there's really no true stepping stone into this series, so that's about as good as you're going to get, because it's very difficult to go practice this anywhere. Well, the lights class is always, in theory, supposed to be the entry level to Supercross class. But the lights class, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of sponsorship, a lot of talent in this class. And coming from an amateur level into Supercross is a huge jump. And they're trying to make something happen, possibly use a Arena Cross series as that stepping stone. I came to Arena Cross. For me, it was more of a place for me to end my career than to begin it. But young riders like Michael Blow, she's using that arena cross series to step it down into the East Coast lights. And uh, he's getting the job done right now. Final lap here in Orlando. Clock going to lead this one. From the gate drop to the checkered flat. There he is. Platt doing a great job. Mentioned just a couple weeks ago, they had their semi broken into the Blackfoot Honda semi. The Canadian rider, they stole their Hondas completely out of the, away from them, uh, out of the out of their semi. They had to regroup, get some bikes ready, and uh, the Blackfoot Honda team is doing a great job getting those bikes ready, and getting back into racing. And on to the checkered flag goes Dusty Claude, the rider out of British Columbia, Canada. He's going on to the main event. Lichtel will get the final transfer spot on that 811. There's a good look at him. And Ward will end up being one spot short of making it into tonight's main event. So the driver out of Alabama, Chad Ward, the rider, I should say, unfortunately, not going to make the transfer. Here's a look at the four that are going on. Dusty Claude, Thomas Hahn, Michael Blos, and Josh Lichtel are going on to tonight's main event. Tuesday night, catch an all-new two-wheel Tuesday on speed. Greg White keeps you in the loop with all the latest motorcycle news, new equipment features, and rider profiles. Keep in the groove and out of the hay bale with Two Wheel Tuesday. Tuesday night, 8 Eastern, only on speed. Coming up next here on speed from Orlando, we'll have the main event for you. 22 riders will get in the gate and ready to go for 15 laps here at the Citrus Bowl. Bowl in Orlando, Florida. The Supercross Lights East Coast main event is loading up in the gate. Let's show you our Dunlop start list. Josh Grant, been a player all season on that number 24 Honda. Of course, the man everybody will be watching and chasing probably 
Davy Millsaps. But Chris Gotzler still looking for that first win on his Kawasaki could come here tonight. It's going to be about to start. I mean, it's, I hate to state the obvious, but it, a good start is going to be the key tonight. Josh Grant's been proving each week that he can get out front early. Gosler has been able to get good starts. Millsaps lately has been getting good starts. But if he's hoping to run with Grant, it's going to be very interesting tonight to see if Millsaps can match it. Progressive Direct pre-race report time. Here's Krista. Guys, one obvious change. It has gotten cold. I have added a coat, obviously. And one of the key points of the track to watch tonight, this kind of double step on. It's a, it's a two-tiered step on. Some guys are choosing to kind of jump up here and then just jump right over the second tier. Others we've been watching kind of skating on their rear wheel over it. But it's definitely throwing off the rhythm a little bit. So this will definitely be a key point on the track tonight. It was very warm here today as we take a look at Davy Millsaps, about 85 degrees. And now, as Krista mentioned, the temperatures definitely dropped, I'd say, upper 50s, Denny? Yeah, upper 50s. And it's, it's one thing these guys are back in their truck, they're riding their life cycles, they're trying to get their heart rate up, trying to warm up. Davy Millsaps is obviously one of those guys who's been working hard. He's going to be ready for this. Millsaps, he's the guy to beat, I think, as far as winning three out of the last four main events. But Josh Grant, he's been the fastest guy all night. He has the fastest lap time in practice. He laid down the fastest lap time in his heat race. And his heat race alone was three seconds faster than that of David Millsaps. Josh Grant looking to get his second win of the season tonight. Those 25 points, they go to the winner. That's what everybody's chasing here tonight. Somebody better get that or Millsaps is going to run away with this thing. He just, it's all about to start right now. and he's, It could be a two Honda Rider duel. We'll see what we see. Well, Millsaps doesn't get a great start. He tucks to the inside and gets back at about fifth. Brian Johnson grabbing that whole shot in that star race with Lucas Oil. Smith Optics Yamaha out front with Chris Goose Gosler in second. We know Gosler's a good starter. If he can break out front, get around Johnson quickly, open up a lead on the favorites of Grant and Millsaps, we can see Chris Gosler possibly get his first career win tonight in Orlando. And here he comes up the inside through the whoops, and Gosler's been riding very well tonight. Look at that, taking the lead away. Boy, this young rider, I think Denny, if nothing else, he hasn't earned a win yet, but he's earned a lot of respect from the rest of the folks in the industry. 100%. Uh, you know, I've been a fan of Goose for a lot of years, Chris Gosler, but he's really proven himself this year with consistency. That's been his problem. He's shown flash and brilliance throughout his entire career, but he's been on the box, the podium now, three out of the four races. And right now, with him out front, Millsaps is in fourth. Grant right there in fifth behind Millsaps. Gosser's got to be the guy to beat in this main event. They all got to be searching. They got to go. I got to get by these two Yamahas and set my sights on Chris Gosser. Although, look at Brandon Jessman right there in the second. Jessman's shown some good results this season as well. This is going to be an outstanding main event. There's Millsaps. Never count him out. Just when you think he's gotten a horrible start, and that's the end of it, he finds a way of bouncing back. And in getting the win. Coming through the field. Bill Saps is around Brian Johnson. Josh Grant is around Brian Johnson. Bill Saps is now in the third. Grant's in fourth, right behind Gosler and Brandon Jessman. The stage is set. These are the top four guys in the point stage right now. And they're currently the top four as we head into lap four. Gosler has podiumed every round except for Atlanta, where he finished ninth. He's got one second. He opened up very strong in St. Louis and a pair of thirds the last two weeks. Looking for that elusive win here so far this season. Like Grant and Millsaps haven't had it. That's big for the championship. Watch these guys, different lines. They're going wide right now. Send them for this whoop section. Millsaps has proven to be the fast guy in the whoops all season long. Grant's was not the fast guy in Daytona, but look at Grant. He's been obviously doing his homework all week. Makes the pass on Millsaps and then jams it in the corner, unable to do that section. That's a section Chris Devoto was just talking about at the opening of the show. Josh was unable to get up over the step up while Millsaps made the move up over the top. But not to slow Grant down. He triples right past Millsaps and moves into third. Very strong move by Josh Grant, who now is all over Jessamine. Oh, another aggressive move by Grant, bumping Brandon Jessamine out of the way, moves into second, now sets his sights on Chris Gosler. Well, if anybody's going to catch 
Millsaps and the points, that's the way you're going to have to ride. Well, you're going to have to make up do more than that to catch Millsaps and the points. He's got a huge points lead. But right now, all these guys can do is hope for wins each weekend. And the best thing to get it done is like Grant moving guys out of his way, moving to the front of the pack. And Millsaps knows he has a sense of urgency right now. He has to get around Jessica. He cannot let Grant get away. Grant's proven he's been the fastest guy all night long. And look at Grant down the inside of the whoops. He takes the lead. Takes it right away from Chris Gosler, and the Honda rider goes to the front. And Millsaps closes back in on Gosler. And it doesn't look like Gosler has slowed down a whole lot. It just looks like Grant has really picked up the pace. Grant is going unbelievably fast. He's setting a blistering pace. We talked about in the last few shows. His trainer, his riding coach is Ryan Hughes. The Rhino, the guy's an animal. And if you got a guy like that who's coaching you and teaching you, Millsaps, I mean, uh, Josh Grant made his slowest point was last week was the whoops. I guarantee you went home. Ryan Hughes said, man, we're going to practice whoops all week long until you get these things figured out. And Josh Grant had took his, strong, his weak point into the whoops, and now they're the strong points tonight in Orlando. Could be a battle here for second place. Gosler trying to fend off Millsaps. But the 118 is looming large. Here they come through the whoops. Millsaps right by him. Just seeing how challenging that whoop section is. They're all cupped out. There's all kinds of edges. Very wide. You can go anywhere on the track, and you get to see these guys' bikes just dancing through that rhythm of the whoop section. Davey Millsaps, the point leader, is up to second. Can he catch Josh Grant? Well, stay with us to find out. East Coast main event continues here in Orlando. The Citrus Bowl is the side of this round. And Josh Grant has the lead over Davey Millsaps on the number 118. The two Honda riders battling for the win here as we approach the halfway point. There's a look at the gap. Millsaps in the yellow riding gear. Trying to chase down Josh Grant about three and a half seconds back. Now let's take you back to our progressive direct hole shot. Show you how this a, one got underway. Oh, grab and a huge hole shot on that star race. Lucas Oil's Yamaha is Brian Johnson. He grabbed the hole shot as he raced. He grabbed an enormous one here in the main event. He went wide. All the other guys tried to go to the inside. And Brian Johnson grabs the hole shot and takes off with the lead. Chris Gosler had a good start as well. He has slipped back to third. And it's all Josh Grant right now with seven laps to go. Josh makes a big mistake in the whoops, almost lot, hits a false neutral. His bike comes to a complete stop, gets a little sideways over that step up jump that Chris has spoke about earlier, and all of a sudden we've got ourselves a race. And Denny, those are the kinds of mistakes that have opened the door for Davey Millsaps throughout the course of this season. Millsaps with his third race win of the year already. Honda with five AMA Supercross Lights race wins in a row. You're exactly right. The mistakes by the other guys, along with the incredible strength and talent of David Millsaps, it's opened up the door and allow him to win three races out of four. Josh Grant opened up the season with two big crashes in St. Louis, finished 22nd. That just gave a big advantage to David Millsaps, obviously, the points. Two weeks ago, he, uh, Josh Grant was out front, crashed when a lapper was down in Indianapolis, gave the, the win to Millsaps. And tonight, right now, Grant makes a couple mistakes, and David Millsaps closes the door. The worst race Millsaps has had so far this year was his second in Atlanta. And that's when he fell down. It right. opened up the door for Josh Grant. Basically, even with that mistake on the last lap, Grant lost about one second to Bill Stapps. He still holds down. If we come around here for lap 10, almost a three second lead. So Grant is still the fast guy on the track. He opened up a half second again that lap. Bill Stapps, if he's hoping to get this win, he's gonna have to change up some of his lines and find a half second. Do you see any place on the track where he's losing time? Uh, you know, I really can't. I know right here, this section, Josh Grant is choosing to go wide, jump on and jump off while Millsaps is going to the inside and choosing to jump over the whole jump. I don't know if that's really the point right there, if that's the place where Grant's loose or gaining the ground, but I think Grant's getting it right here through the whoop section. He's picking up the front end and just blitzing across the tops. Let's check in with Krista. Down here on Mechanics Row, you're looking at Carlos Rivera there in the red. That's Davey Millsaps mechanic. He's been writing the lap times down on his pit board. Naveen Dasnyake, the very tall Sobe Honda mechanic, 
Josh Grant's mechanic has been writing words like smooth, patience. Josh, obviously, very fast. He doesn't want him, obviously, though, to get out of control. He's trying to calm his rider down. About half a second, the difference in lap times between the two. And that's been varying on that last lap. Millsaps is actually two tenths quicker than Grant, but he's still two and a half seconds behind. Millsaps won Orlando last year on a Suzuki. The only rider to win Orlando on two Grants was Brian Swing. Millsaps can tie that here tonight if he can get the win on his Honda. But he's going to have to go to work here in a hurry to catch Josh Grant. He's got a lot of time to make up. Two and a half seconds doesn't really seem that much, but. Jamie, look at the gap. Or Teddy, look at the gap back to Chris Gosler. Well, you think two and a half seconds is, is a lot. Try almost 10 seconds back to Gosler from Davey Millsaps. Gosler put in a solid race. But on Thursday, he talked about it. He goes, I, I'm feeling fast. I'm happy to be on top, on the box each week, but I need to find a little bit more speed if I'm going to get a win. And right now, Gosler is still trying to find that speed because these two Honda riders made their move past him and have taken off. Another podium run, though. I know Chris is still looking for that first win, but another podium will certainly be a strong finish for him here tonight. This is that line I was talking about. Josh is going outside, jumping on and jumping off. Ooh, front end a little higher right there. It can send you off the, over the berm if you can't get that front end down. But I think he's settled into a consistent pace. As long as he can avoid any kind of lappers, he's only got three laps remaining, and Josh Grant could possibly pick up his second win of his career and of the season. Millsap seems faster through the whoops, but Grant seems fast enough. Yeah, it's, I think it's a matter of just consistency right now. It looks as though David Millsap has kind of settled in. Obviously, he wants to win, but overall, it's going to come down to who wants to win the title, or who's the smartest guy to win a title, and Millsap is that guy right now. Well, I think Millsaps is smart enough to know this is the kind of racetrack on a night like tonight that can jump out and bite you if you run and push too hard and get a little careless. So maybe taking second, grabbing those points doesn't really open the door too much for anybody to catch you in the championship chase, which is what could happen if you crash. Yeah, he has a commanding 25 or 23 point lead over Chris Goss from the points. For Davey Millsaps to lose his title, it would have to take a catastrophe, big crash. Bill Saps realizes that. He, he realized he wasn't as fast as Josh Grant tonight. He's going to take that second place, go home, prepare for next week in Detroit, get that big points lead, and possibly win his first East Coast Lights title. Back into a dome next week. Fort Field, first time. The yeah, Mobile Supercross Lights East Coast Series has raced here so many years. The Pontiac Silverdome. And now they'll try out the new home, the Detroit Lions, where they held the Super Bowl just a month or so ago. White flag is out. Josh Cram looking to give Honda their sixth Supercross Lights win in a row. What do you think of that, Denny? Yeah, Honda's on fire right now. They've got some of the best guys. They're getting the job done, and it's all about finding the right guys to get it done. And Josh Grant is getting it done in the East. Bill Saps is getting it done in the East. Andrew Short's getting it done in the West. So take your hat off to Team Honda, get and find themselves some young talent and develop them like they are right now. And of course, that bodes well for Honda's future in the Supercross Series when you've got riders like Grant, Bill Saps, and Andrew Short on their way up through the ranks. Yeah, definitely. And it's all about the graduating from the lights classes. And we've had a lot of guys kind of sitting in the lights this past few seasons. I think it's time to move on up, and Josh Grant's going to be soon a superstar in the Supercross class. As he does a big old hill clicker. He's going about to collect his second win of the season. What a great run for Josh Grant as he gets his second win of the year. Josh Grant picking up big points in the chase for the East Coast Championship. And Davey Millsaps with a second place finish continues to dominate the point standings on the East Coast Tour. Josh Grant gave up 25 points in opening round in St. Louis. As he leaves Orlando, he's 25 points down. He's got to be kicking himself in the butt for those two crashes at the kickstart off the season. Well, he'll celebrate here shortly, and we'll be there to talk to him. We're coming back for more from Orlando right after these words. This weekend. Grant gets the win. Davey Millsaps comes home in second. Chris Gosler comes across the line in third with the Kawasaki up on the podium. And to the podium is where we're headed, where Chris Devote is standing by with our winner.
standing by with the happiest guy down here, Josh Grant. Josh, that win was big because we've seen Davey Vilsaps kind of run away with some races here lately. That was big for you and for this entire season. Yeah, you know, I kind of got pinched off on the start. Uh, you know, I got a bad jump. Davey cut over on me, but, uh, you know, it's no big deal. I mean, I got by these guys pretty quick. You know, I actually like the sand tonight. It, you know, it was in my favor. And, you know, I've been working with Wyndham for, a while, uh, for this last week, and, you know, he's helped me out a lot, and I think that's, uh, that's why I'm up here. A veteran helping one of the younger guys, and he races to the win here in Orlando. Well, let's take a look at the East Coast point standings and how things have changed there a little bit. Look at Josh Grant now tying Chris Gossler in the point standings. What would have happened if he had scored those points? And we talked about Josh Grant losing just a few weeks back. Well, let's head back downstairs and talk to the man who's leading the point standings, Davey Millsaps, who sits second here tonight. All right, and I can bring Davey Millsaps over right now, trading places with Josh Grant. Here's our second place finisher tonight. You do still have the points lead, and you've got a, a commanding lead on that, but I know you want to win every one of these. Talk about your night. You know, my, night went, uh, my night went all right, but uh, I don't know. It's, you know, I got a good start, and you know, Josh came from behind and passed me. I think he was right behind me the whole race, so I don't know. You know, Once he got by me, I just kind of let him have it. You know, I didn't, he, I didn't know what he was going to do, play dirty or not, but you know, he rode a good race, and uh, I don't know, I just kind of wrote conservative, you know, just so careful and, you know, came out second. You got to hang on to those podiums to keep that points lead, that's for sure. That's what Davey Millsaps did tonight. Well, we got a great Buku Big Air replay for you here tonight. Josh Grant with the awesome heel clicker showing off here at the Citrus Bowl as the flash bulbs went off. A very stylish way of making his way towards the victory. Chris Gossler is with Kristen. We're just shuffling these riders in and out. Yeah, we have our third place finisher, Chris Gossler. And Chris, this might be the most important third place finish of the season because you want to hang on to second. Obviously, you want first in the points, but you really need to hang on to second with Josh charging. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Josh rode great tonight. So, Davey, I mean, I don't know. I got out front and just, I tightened up. I mean, I rode, I rode so bad. I'm so disappointed with myself. But, uh, you know, I couldn't have done it without my team, Monster, Energy, Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Thor. Bridgestone tires and just everybody has helped me out this year and give me a chance. I, I really appreciate it. Give him a chance, Chris Gossler, third. Here's our Toyota moving forward schedule. The upcoming races were headed off to Detroit. You can see the Supercross and the Supercross Light Series in action from Detroit, Michigan Sport Field right here on Speed. Coming up next on Speed is the Lucas Oil on the Edge. It was a good night here for Josh Grant, for Chris Devota and Danny Stevenson. I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from the Citrus Bowl.